Uh, just to give you an example, on January 2nd, 2025, there was a near-Earth object that the Minor Planet Center, the official organization supported by the International Ast uh, Astronomical Union, uh, declared as a near-Earth asteroid. They gave it a name and within a day they realized, oh sorry, this, this one actually follows the path of the Tesla Roadster car that was launched by SpaceX in 2018. And therefore, it's not a rock, it's a car. But if they didn't know about the path of the Tesla Roadster car, they would declare it as an asteroid, as a rock. And so when astronomers tell you it's most likely an asteroid, most likely a comet, you should just assume that this is their vocabulary of describing anything in the sky. Yes. A new anomaly has emerged from the growing catalogs surrounding the interstellar object 3I Atlas, another irregularity added to a list that has already exceeded a dozen. What began as isolated curiosities has expanded into a sequence of chemically and physically distinct events, each stacking upon the last, each challenging the boundaries of known cometary behavior. The latest finding, identified through high-resolution spectroscopic analysis, is the detection of ethanol in quantities far beyond anything previously recorded in a natural object. At first, the scientific community responded with the expected caution. Methanol has been observed in comets before. It is not exotic. Cometary chemistry is diverse, often unpredictable, and sensitive to temperature, solar radiation, and the deep freeze conditions of its origin. But the numbers emerging from 3I Atlas defied the usual patterns. The object's water content, normally the baseline for these comparisons, was shockingly low, around 4%. An object with so little water is already an anomaly, but the methanol signature refused to fit into any familiar ratios. If the researchers had compared methanol to the usual water baseline, the resulting proportion would have been meaningless, hundreds of thousands of times higher than anything known in a natural object. So instead, they compared the methanol levels to hydrogen cyanide, a compound that was present in greater abundance. Even then, the result remained extreme. Depending on wavelength and analytical model, the methanol level appeared to range between 79 and 120 times the hydrogen cyanide signal. In other words, 3I Atlas seemed to contain or produce methanol in a quantity unprecedented in any natural object ever measured, cometary or otherwise. Only one other comet in the modern catalog produced a superficially similar ratio, C2016 R2 Pondstars. But the comparison as researchers later clarified, was deceptive. Pond stars did not actually contain an unusually high amount of methanol. Rather, it contained unusually low water. The methanol ratio became artificially inflated because water, the denominator in the equation, was nearly absent. In absolute terms, pond stars contained methanol in a normal range. The ratio was a mathematical artifact, not a chemical outlier. 3i Atlas, on the other hand, resisted such simplifications. In absolute terms, in raw chemical presence, not relative comparison, the methanol was immense. It could not be dismissed as a quirk of low water content, nor did the hydrogen cyanide comparison soften the numbers enough to match known categories. If the water content had been used, the numbers would have been so inflated that the team avoided publishing them entirely, noting indirectly that such a comparison would yield an absurd, unphysical value. The choice to compare with hydrogen cyanide was deliberate, a scientific attempt to remain within the boundary of reason. Yet, even that boundary buckled. The puzzle grew deeper when another detail emerged, metallic enrichment. The same data set suggested that 3i Atlas contained a surprising amount of nickel, far more than expected for a comet, and comparatively little iron. Astronomical bodies that accumulate metallic compounds normally exhibit iron and nickel in correlated proportions. To extract nickel selectively from an impact, while nearly excluding iron, would require a mechanism unknown in natural collision processes. Scientists proposed a tentative scenario. Perhaps the object had collided with a metallic body rich in nickel. But such bodies are extremely rare, and even then, the lack of iron remained unexplained. The speculative leap from nickel-rich collision to nickel-only target strained the hypothesis. The metallic anomaly alone would not have raised alarms. But in sequence with the methanol anomaly, the low water content, the CO2 abundance, and the unusual dust polarization detected earlier in the year, it added to a growing pattern. 
Each irregularity could, independently, be brushed aside as uncommon but natural. Together, they created a chain of outliers, each reinforcing the next, each bending the object further away from the profile of a conventional comet. When the study was released, more than 10 scientists signed it, and the tone remained conservative. The natural explanation proposed was simple. 3i Atlas may have formed in an environment colder than the birthplaces of our solar system's comets. A colder nursery could favor the retention of volatile compounds like methanol. But that explanation led to another uncomfortable question. How much colder? The Oort cloud, the frigid outer reservoir where our comets originate, ranges between 3 and 30 Kelvin, barely above the cosmic microwave background's 2.7 Kelvin. If 3i Atlas formed only a degree or so colder than that, would it explain the magnitude of its anomalies? Would a fractional shift near absolute zero create chemical proportions thousands of times beyond any known object? The argument felt thin, even to those inclined to defend it. Some scientists privately questioned whether the cold formation environment hypothesis was being stretched to avoid more controversial interpretations. It was notable that the study did not mention artificial origins as a possibility, not even as a fringe scenario to be explicitly dismissed. That omission was criticized by a minority of researchers who argued for a more open approach. Among them was Harvard astrophysicist Avi Lieb, who publicly suggested that specialists trained exclusively on comets might be too eager to force new data into old categories. If an AI were trained only on comets, it would interpret everything as a comet. The analogy resonated. In a field where classification systems are built from limited historical data, the gravitational pull of familiar explanations is strong. But methanol carries implications that extend beyond chemistry. It is a potential fuel, discussed in aerospace engineering as a high-efficiency candidate for future propulsion systems. It is also a product of biological fermentation, raising the faint but unavoidable possibility of processes unfamiliar to planetary science. To be clear, there was no evidence of biology, engineering, or technology in the spectrum. But the scale of the methanol detection forced researchers to confront the limits of natural models. As chemical debates stirred, another anomaly surfaced, this time dynamical rather than molecular. A subtle but measurable shift had been detected in 3i Atlas's trajectory. The shift did not align with gravitational expectations. In other words, the object exhibited a non-gravitational acceleration. Such accelerations are known in comets, usually caused by outgassing jets pushing gently against the nucleus. But the pattern in this case did not match. According to Loeb, the acceleration was steep, brief, and sudden, appearing abruptly rather than building gradually over time. NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory updated the object's database entry shortly afterward reducing the reported acceleration to a smaller value more compatible with natural explanations. But Loeb contested the revision, arguing that the new model artificially stretched the acceleration across a longer time frame, diminishing its intensity and erasing the sudden spike. The acceleration, whether interpreted as a sudden impulse or a more gradual force, had an immediate and measurable consequence. It nudged the trajectory of 3i Atlas just enough to force researchers to rerun their orbital solutions, and the new calculations produced a result that was as subtle as it was significant. The shift altered the object's projected encounter with Jupiter, changing the geometry of its passage by a margin that, while small on a cosmic scale, carried enormous implications for how the object would interact with the giant planet planet's gravitational domain. Prior to the updated models, simulations indicated that 3i Atlas would pass delicately within Jupiter's Hillsphere, the vast but precisely defined region where the planet's gravity overpowers the pull of the Sun. Crossing into this zone, even slightly, would mean entering a gravitational environment structured enough to capture temporary satellites, distort trajectories, or, in rare circumstances, enable orbital insertion of smaller bodies. It is the invisible perimeter that determines whether an object remains a wanderer or becomes, however briefly, a captive. After the revision, the predicted trajectory shifted outward. The object was now expected to pass just beyond that same gravitational threshold. The difference amounted to tens of thousands of kilometers, negligible in the context of interplanetary space, yet decisive in determining whether 3i Atlas would skirt the edge of Jupiter's influence or brush against its gravitational authority. In both versions of the model, however, the object's path hovered astonishingly close to the boundary, separated from entry by a sliver of distance almost too fine to be credited to coincidence alone. This is not a border easily approached. 
Jupiter's hill sphere spans more than 50 million kilometers across, a gravitational frontier broad enough to dominate the motions of dozens of moons and countless transient visitors. For an interstellar object, one that originated beyond the Sun's domain and entered the solar system on a hyperbolic, one-time trajectory, to pass within such a narrow band of this region required an alignment of timing, velocity, and direction that bordered on surgical precision. It was, in effect, a cosmic thread through an opening that did not invite easy passage. Whether the shift in trajectory was the result of natural outgassing or a more complex, unexplained force, the outcome remained the same. An object from another star system was set to skim the very edge of one of the largest and most powerful gravitational boundaries in the solar system. It was a near miss of astronomical proportions, executed with uncanny accuracy, and it added yet another layer of strangeness to an object already defined by its refusal to behave like anything familiar. The probability of such an encounter by chance, according to one calculation, hovered around 0.004%. In itself, the close approach did not imply intention, but to those already unsettled by the methanol data, the metallic anomaly, the low water content, and the trajectory shift, the timing felt too precise to ignore. If an interstellar probe, or some unknown construct, wished to deploy instruments or small craft into the Jovian system, the hill sphere boundary would be the ideal point for release. Ganymede, one of Jupiter's largest moons and the subject of recent radio signal debates, became an obvious focal point in these speculations. And yet, speculation is not evidence. The scientific method demands restraint, and the majority of researchers remain grounded in natural models. Comets are diverse, often extreme objects. Their chemistry can be startling, their trajectories complex, their outgassing unpredictable. But even within that diversity, 3i Atlas has built a pattern of deviations unusually dense. One or two anomalies can be dismissed. Twelve or more, clustered tightly in a single object, become difficult to smooth away. The public conversation around the object has grown louder and online discussions have intensified. Some treat the anomalies as proof of artificiality. Others treat them as evidence of the limits of comet science. Both positions, in their extreme forms, miss the discipline required to navigate ambiguity. The real story lies somewhere quieter, not in any conclusion, but in the expanding space of questions. What kind of environment produces methanol in such quantity while suppressing water? How does an object accumulate nickel? without iron? Why does its non-gravitational acceleration appear so sudden? And how does an interstellar traveler enter the solar system on a path that threads it through one of the largest and most influential gravitational boundaries available? These questions, taken together, demand fresh models, not dogmatic adherence to old categories. They invite the scientific community to consider unlikely possibilities without surrendering rigor. They compel re-examination of assumptions about comet formation, interstellar stellar chemistry and the mechanisms that govern non-gravitational motion. The case of 3i Atlas is not a verdict, it is an opportunity. As the object continues its course toward the outer planets, instruments across the world and in orbit will gather what data they can. Its passage will be brief. Its secrets, perhaps, will remain only partially revealed. But what has already emerged, the chemical ratios, the metallic fingerprint, the acceleration profile, will persist as an invitation to curiosity. Whether natural or artificial, mundane or extraordinary, 3i Atlas has forced experts and observers alike to reconsider how much of the universe we still do not understand. And for now, that unanswered space, the space where data meets uncertainty, where anomalies press against expectation, is where the story of 3i Atlas lives, not in conclusions, but in the widening horizon of possibility.